that morning was really special because we got to see them for the first time. We usually see them online and it's quite different seeing someone in person and it really brings that level of connection and it makes you a bit closer to that person even though we've built really strong connections over the online Zoom. And I find it really special how we can, in such a short amount of time, we can make such a good connection. And when we came to come visit them, we could see the smiles on their face and the smiles on our face. They were really happy to see us. I love doing these intergenerational learning calls because it's like we're creating heaven on earth and speaking to the residents, I know it makes my week and I'm sure it makes their week as well. And the connections that we've all made, it just, it just, it feels special inside your heart because you know you've done something nice for someone else. And my connection with Norm, I haven't seen him in a long time. Well, I've seen him over video call, but I kind of miss going to see him at the aged care because of this lockdown. But straight away when this lockdown's finished, I'm going to go and visit him if I can. A funny moment was when um, Norm wore like the, his, like the mop on his head and then he put the bow in like he got a new haircut. And um, special, a special moment was when we were sharing the poems and we shared a poem about Norm and Norm wrote a poem about me, which was really special and it made me just feel so good. What do you do? You see school? I'm um, building probably a carpent. What would you like to do in the next video call? I, I, I want to like... I want not to be video, I want them to come here. Is there a particular question you'd like to ask Norm next time? Yeah, how long, like how long was his mum and dad alive and his grandparents alive? What other questions would you like to ask? Like, what uh, how, how did you get, like, um, the passion to um, be a teacher? Ooh. Excellent. When I actually encouraged him to go up there, I didn't think he'd speak. I thought he would be just he would just sit there. But he was actually engaged and he remembers now he will not stop talking about Norm. You know what I thought was really lovely? The fact that he said about his grandfather. He feels mm. as though he's talking to his grandfather when he talks to Norm, which is lovely. The way he was today, I haven't seen him like that all year. I have not seen like so now that he's got that ten points, because he has ten points and he works towards a reward, it might be um, you know, play a game at lunchtime, it might be to take some balls down. Yeah. You know, something go overnight of hope. Now that he's got that ten points, he'll work for that and that'll be his you know, if he does reach it, and he'll be hanging for next week. Mm. He will come to school no matter what, he'll probably get to school even earlier, which is great. Ray, can you maybe share with everybody how doing intergenerational learning has changed your school life from last year to this year? Last year definitely wasn't a very good year. This year's changed and when most and when lockdown wasn't really in effect, I would look forward to the Wednesdays because now we don't know what's happening. And what do you do when you go and um, visit Nick? Well, last time I went to visit him, I gave him a, a scarf and I normally hang around there and I visit the other residents too. What reason would you give to the bosses of education to continue these video calls? I would say that I think it's really good because these, these are things that Google can't give us. Google doesn't have emotions. They've been through World War II. Google can talk about it, but Google doesn't have emotions. Google is just... Plus, Google's not always going to be 100% true, and you know what they're saying is true. In the end, it's like, it's like they're just young people with wrinkles. Every class has good students and students who are yeah. naughty at times or misbehave. Have you noticed any changes for the better with some students? Well, in, with me, yes. I I wasn't I wasn't exactly the best student, and 
I used to be sent down to the principal's office regularly, multiple times a day, and I just be, think that that hasn't happened yet. I barely get told off now, and it just feels like a change that's been ever since the start of the year. So this year, have you been sent to the principal's office, or was it last no, year or the year before? It was last year, the year before, so on, so on. So how do you feel about knowing that there's been a change like that? I feel really good actually. Are you surprised? Well, yeah, I'm surprised I pulled it off this, for this whole term. Congratulations. That's Thank a big you. achievement. Thank you. You should be very proud. I'm sure your family's very proud of you too. Yep. Two last questions. Go ahead. Was humour a part of the video course? Yes, humour was a part of the video course. Any examples? Oh, well, Nick, Nick was joking, Rex was joking, and Norm were doing jokes. Especially when they, especially when they would ask us if we had any jokes. The funniest part was the was the first meeting when I don't remember who was doing the jokes, but they were saying "knock knock, who's there?" They were saying the "who's there" instead of us saying it. Very good. Have you noticed any changes in your teacher since doing these video calls? Uh, well, she's been she's been surprising. She's been like acting really happy after the course because we've been behaving really well with her. Um, from what I've learned during intergenerational learning this year is that I never realized I loved to, like connecting with people so much. And um, with my relationship with Denise, I look as her as my because like we go to school when lockdown isn't in place. So when we connect with them, it's like I'm speaking to my own grandma. I wonder, Evelyn, can you maybe share a little bit about what you like about intergenerational learning? What I like about intergenerational learning, like when we went for Easter, before Easter we saw the residents because I could speak Greek to Helen. And I've also visited the residents once before the lockdown and it was very nice to speak to them and to know lots about them. Um, would you like to say anything? It was a privilege to uh, be with you all today. Um, one thing that has struck me and has stuck with me is even though we're separated by generations, we all are very much alike and have the similar experiences with our dads. So that's really something that we should value and take note of. Um, I, I just want to say thank you. So I'm going to get a bit emotional because when I was a stay-at-home mum, I did a lot of um, volunteer work and I took my littlies to the nursing home. So you have just reignited that joy for me today. And I, I can't wait to get back to my principal and share with her these, this experience. And fingers crossed, I'm going to push for this program to happen in our school because it's amazing. And the joy and the love, honestly, big heart. I, I want this to happen. So thank you. <laughs> It's, it's wonderful. I love the wellbeing outcomes of um, the reason we want to engage in it is mainly the wellbeing aspect of it, the intergenerational friendships and so forth. But um, it's amazing to see what you're all doing and the kids should be so proud of the efforts they're making. And I know that it's definitely impacting their wellbeing and future relationships with different generations. Amazing. It's wonderful what you guys are doing. The programs that Greg is implementing is amazing. Just an observation, and I think what you've done is so clever about linking it into the curriculum because we, we do have a lot of intergenerational interactions within our homes, which is beautiful. I'd love to see more of it, but we, we do. Um, but I think that just what you said, it becomes purposeful. Mm. So, so it's purpose for the students, it's purpose for the residents. So it's that beautiful, lovely interaction, but they've got a duty, they've got a responsibility, they've got a job to do. Mm. So I love that.
writing um, took on a whole life of itself because it was generated by this really great wealth of experience that the children had by making contact with these people. They now had a lot more content uh, and detail to be able to put into their writing. We were looking specifically at vocab because the residents had their own vocab, you know, their own vocabulary that had built up from the, the you know, their, their early days that our children had never experienced. So, you know, even words like pounds, shillings and pence, you know, our kids had no idea. Um, so that was a, there was a whole sort of uh, writing um, and conversational language outcomes that developed. The other thing was we, we quickly discovered that our children were becoming so much more articulate. Um, they were able to sort of ask the kind of open-ended questions of these people and extract the information that they needed. And that just seemed to get better and better each week. So the whole um, experience of oral language has really been fantastic. And one of the goals of our school has been, in fact, to, to develop oral language so that children can articulate their own learning, and they can articulate how they're going with that learning, that sort of metacognition. You know, how am I going? What do I need to do to get better? What do I need to do next? They're so much better now at being able to express themselves because of this interaction that they've been having. Some children who really do have difficulty in communicating uh, how they feel, and, and this often causes behaviour problems. When a child is unable to express how they feel, it often comes out in some difficult behaviours. What we discovered was that the children in these classes who really struggled with this were the ones who really came forward, and it wasn't forced. It seemed to be a natural uh, progression of them taking a lot of interest and then really wanting to be involved in the conversation. And we found that the interaction with these residents, the el these elderly people, it almost sort of calmed them. Uh, it, it gave them a sense of themselves that sort of in a, in a large classroom situation, we weren't able to provide. Um, the residents really spoke to a part of them that we couldn't. And the children reacted positively, so positively. So positively, in fact, that they were organising to go and meet the residents, you know, outside school time. They wanted to continue the relationship. And so we had feedback from parents saying, uh, not just for, for, for children with difficult behaviour, but right across the board, you know, my son, my daughter has so much a better relationship now with grandma and grandpa. Like, he has lots of conversations with them and he's really, he and she are really taking an interest uh, in their grandparents, which is so lovely. Um, so that was another outcome that we didn't expect. And then, of course, from the other end, um, the director of the, the uh, um, aged care residence is calling me and saying, Michael, uh, our residents are just over the moon about this. They, they're eating better, they're sleeping better. Um, they're, they're having a lot more conversation around the table because they have a common element, I suppose, to discuss. Um, and and the, the, the nursing staff are happier because the residents are happier. Um, and we even had an example of one gentleman who was quite ill um, and we were worried that he wouldn't be able to attend a session and he managed to attend. By the end of the session, he, he was a different person. Um, it just, it, it, this, this whole notion of making that connection with kids really lifted his spirits. So um, there's a lot of tangible things in terms of these outcomes that have come out of this that we hadn't expected.